See, you know, it's funny how people will tell you, uh, well, if y'all don't like it so much here in America, won't y'all go back to Africa, go back to Africa, right? When the Israelites began to grow and flourish in Goshen, one of the things that Pharaoh said is, look, he said, these people, they are stronger than we are. They are mightier. They're faster. And, you know, they're, 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 they're growing like crazy. What's going to happen if when our enemies come up against us, that they decide to join with our enemies and thus get up on out the land, right? So they didn't really want to get rid of them. They just wanted to kind of keep their numbers down and keep them suppressed while we built them treasured cities, right? I think about where we are today, right? In Goshen, the place of our comfort became the place of our captivity. But here in this land, the place of our captivity have become the place of our comfort. And so many of us, or at least some of us, I shouldn't say many, some of us have acquired, you know, some possession. We've got some houses and cars and some of us got some, you know, a little bit of money. You know, some of us even may have some businesses, but we become comfortable here in America. And so if the time should come that we're called to leave all this behind, some of us are not going to want to leave it behind, right? Because we're comfortable here, right? But we don't understand that we are building treasured cities for somebody else, right? If you don't believe that, right, look at the record industry. Look at the record industry, right? If I, I, I used to deal with music and with contracts and stuff because, you know, my sons are both musicians and we had a little production company. I think I mentioned that in one of my intro videos. And we work with a couple of artists and, uh, you know, um, some of the music that, that we've, we've, we've done in the past, I'm going to, you know, uh, introduce it and, you know, play uh, on some of these videos. But when I looked over some of these contracts, they were legalized slavery. These companies, these big record companies, you know, production companies or whatever, they would lock you into contracts that they throw you some money up front. But then you had to produce X amount of albums or for X amount of years. And you got to pay them back that money they gave you up front. And then they'd only pay you pennies on the dollar for mechanicals or what's you know considered record sales as mechanicals. They'd require a part of your publishing because, you know, if you get it played on the air, you know, on radio stations, get put into a movie or use as a soundtrack, that's your publishing, right? They, they, would, they, would, they would get some of that. Some of them would they, they would require you to they would own your masters, right? Um, that means that any further production of any of the, that music from those master recordings belong to them, and they control what happened with it. In some contracts, your very image was controlled by them. You couldn't use your you know your, your persona. You couldn't use your stage name. You couldn't use even your face. You had to you know they had to give you permission. To, to appear on certain shows or appear on certain things. They owned you lock, stock, and barrel, right? So while you're, you're making a few, you're so happy that you got some a little bit of chump change thrown at you up front and you run out and you buy you some big cars and buy you some big houses. And then next minute, you know, you, yeah, you had that one or two hit songs, but then you ain't producing no hits no more. Then all of a sudden, all that houses and those cars, you still got those payments coming in. You still got those taxes coming in. And then what happens? You know, MC Hammer made a bunch of money for a bunch of people. But there was a time that MC was broke. Had to give up the mansion. Had to sell some of the cars. You know, I don't know what he's doing right now. But I know that, you know, uh, MC was the man back in the days. Right? But once again, those contracts got him. I look at people like, um, what's that, that, that brother from Different Strokes, uh, uh, um, uh, the little short one. Um, I forget his name, but I saw him one time. He had to be working a security guard job someplace, you know, um, you know, getting into all kind of problems. You know, some of these childhood stars, you know, uh, the, 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 those from different strokes, all of them was messed up at one point. The one that played Willis was on drugs. The, the, the girl that played, I think her name was Dana or something. I think she committed suicide or something. But that, that, that business just took these young people 
in this and just chewed them up and spat them out. And they're not the only ones. A bunch of these childhood actors and actresses, they end up, you know, getting hooked up on drugs and committing suicide and just out there because they didn't know how to handle themselves. And this business just just locked them down. And then all of a sudden when they they weren't desirable anymore, they were cast aside. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's a dog eat dog business um, that, that I, I, I jumped off into the movies, but the record in the movie industry, they, they go hand in hand. You know, people will tell you that that's a sleazy business. You got cats like Harvey Weinstein out there, man. You know, this cat probably if he had no money, wouldn't be able to get a woman because he, 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 he I don't know what woman would be with this guy. But because he was in a position of authority, you know, he, 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 he had all these We've heard the story of the casting couch, and I'm not saying that all actors and actresses, you know, are, are a part of that. But sometimes, you know, the the the, the way up is down, and 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 those of you who are adults, y'all know what I mean. And so, um, people will tell you about these wild parties. If you're a model, you know, you're constantly, you know, having to uh, worry about whether you're gonna get the next gig if you don't give sexual favor. To, 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 to some sleaze ball who sees that as an opportunity to take advantage of you because he's the gatekeeper, right? This is the world that we're living in. And so uh, even going beyond uh, the, the movie and, and, and the entertainment business, look at boxers, right? Some of our, we have some of the best boxers out there, right? Many of these boxers end up broke because once again, we're building treasure cities for others. But then when it comes to our money, we get that little bit of money, we get that sugar rush, we run out, we spend all that money, and then we ain't winning fights like we did anymore. And so our, our the luster falls off of us. And then what? We end up broke, right? You had a few people who made some smart decisions, like Larry Holmes, I think it was, that you know used some of that money and started some businesses and stuff. But a lot of these cats end up broke, you know? Um, you go from there, and then you go, in, you, you go into track and field. Man, look at look 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 at what Usain Bolt did for track and field, right? You know, yeah, we had people that follow track and field, but then when you know when we get into it, it brings competition and it brings a certain kind of swagger, right? I'm a tennis fan, and I know that Serena and Venus Williams, they built treasured how uh, treasured cities for for that whole tennis industry, okay? And and and, and how near no no black folks is watching tennis, right? But as soon as Venus and Serena came on the, on, the, on, the, on the scene, it piqued people's interest because we'd like to see our people out there compete and we'd like to root for our people. So they raised the level of that game. The purses became bigger. And, 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 and these young women, they even rallied that women get, get paid as on parity with the men because women weren't getting the same kind of, kind of pay that men were getting. And so, you know, those two sisters came on the scene and they revolutionized the game. White folks won't admit it. But but the game was a soft little powder puff, especially when it came to women's tennis. When these girls came on there with speed and strength and whacking the heck out of that ball, and people said, "Man, we got we got to change this game around." And so that's when you start seeing even the white players now beginning to develop a game and starting to come with more power and you know trying to, to try to match these girls. They won't admit it, but we know what time it is. Look, hardly any any, any, any black folks watched golf until Tiger Woods came along. And, and even though Tiger don't think he black, but he, he, he just as dark as me and you, right? But he faced some of that racism when he came on, on, on the scene. But because of Tiger Woods, the level golf was elevated to another level, right? Building treasure cities for others. And yeah, we make money off of it. Some of us have make some good money off of it. But whatever we make, trust me, they're making four or five times as much, Okay. Um, and, and, and it goes, you know, even it goes into uh, uh, football and basketball. You know, if we represent, you know, uh, somewhere about 14 percent of the population or whatever number they, they're throwing out there. But we make up probably 70, 75 percent of the NBA, the NFL. Right. Building treasured cities for other people. Right. So, you know, we are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. And others know it, and they use us to capitalize off of, right? We have so much, we, we don't understand the power that we have as a people, right? You, you look out there, the Kardashians, and you look out there, you know, man, a lot of these people, you know, uh, people, like what's that little white boy, that uh, uh, Justin Bieber, 
You know, some we we think they got their style and their their little swagger and their they, that they got that from black folks. You know, I'm I'm doing I'm 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 getting ready to put out something. You know, talking about Zion has a sound. You know, we 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 there's something special about our people, and if you can't recognize it, then something is wrong with you. Who is like unto the Most High? <laughs> Exodus 15, 11 says, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders? To whom then will we liken God, or what likeness will ye compare unto him? To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One? Isaiah 48 says, the grass withereth and the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Right. This was a subject I wasn't sure I was going to I was going to tackle in this lesson. But, you know, I'm, I'm putting it all out there. Right. Because we're talking about what's up is down and what's down is up. We're talking about the deception that's going on out there and the level that people will go to to try to uh, 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 keep a lie going. Right. The extremes that they will go to to keep a lie going. Now, I don't remember this in Jamaica because I was young when I came up here. I was eight years old. But I remember going into uh, uh, the classroom, PS91 in Brooklyn, New York, and going into that classroom. And if it wasn't in the regular classroom, it was either in history or in geography or in science. But you were going to find one of these globes somewhere in the classroom. Right. So you start them off while they are young, believing a lie. Right. Now. The Art of Deception. Paul Joseph Goebbels, uh, he was born in Reich, Germany, and he was the Minister of Propaganda for the German Third Reich under Adolf Hitler. There is a quote that is attributed to Goebbels which says, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. The lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie. It thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus by extension the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. The truth is the greatest enemy of the state. When people want to keep you dumbed down and like 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 sheep falling after what they or their experts tell you you ought to believe, then they've got you in their trap, right? In 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 3, it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling, there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Right? So that falling away, what are they falling away from? People will say, well, they're falling away from the faith, they're falling away from falling after Christ, they're falling away. And all those things are true. But what they're falling away from is the truth, right? The truth. The first thing that it says is let no man deceive you. They're falling away from the truth. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. See, we're going to be susceptible to this kind of stuff. Because we will not hold fast to the truth of the scripture. So we will allow ourselves to believe a lie and we will see uh, uh, things that, 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 that looks like the truth, that has enough semblance or resemblance to the truth, but it is a lie. And so by believing a lie, you know what, when, 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 when the, the, the serpent approached Eve and said, did not the Most High say that of every tree you can eat of, you know, uh, oh, no, 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 that's not what he said. He said we can eat of every tree, but the one that's in the middle of the garden uh, the, the, with the knowledge of good and evil, we, he said we shouldn't eat from it, neither should we touch it. So right away, 
He, I don't remember him saying anything about touching the tree. He just said, you, you shall not eat of his fruit for the day you do. You should certainly not. But she's already changed the story. Somewhere in her mind, she's, she's, she's already trying to rationalize or somehow trying to, 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 to twist or, or get a different understanding than what the Most High said. He said what he meant and he meant what he said. But the enemy you know, figured, oh, I got her to change a little bit of the story. So let me let me push her a little bit more. Well, no, what he what he knew was that the moment you edit, you would be like him, knowing good and evil. And that was appealing to her. And so she added, and of course, we know the, the rest of the story we know. Right. And so it's going to be easy for us to be deceived because slowly but surely we started believing less and less the word of God. Yeah, he may have said so and so, but you know, we're not, but the scientist is saying so and so. And so now the scientists are taking the place of God. Irrespective of what the word say, we're now accepting what the scientist tells us and not what the word of God said. And he said, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Revelation 12, 9, and that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So that spirit of deception is, is, is throughout the whole world. And so we are, are having to sort out now. We're having to dig through all the, 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 the lies and dig through all the deception to come to an understanding of the truth. And so great is the lie that even though your eyes are telling you one thing, they have got you convinced that don't believe your lying eyes, believe what we tell you. In, in John 8, 32, it says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. There's a certain amount of liberation in knowing the truth, right? And, you know, I was having the conversation with a friend of mine about the whole thing about round earth versus flat earth. And he's like, listen, man, I don't even want to hear this stuff because how does it make a difference in my life today? And I'm um, like, don't you care to know what the truth is? Well, if it doesn't make a difference in my life, I don't see how it's going to be. You know. And so I'm like, okay, whatever. For me, I want to know the truth. I'm grown enough to accept that even if the truth isn't what I want to hear, but truth is truth, right? And so we have to, I made, a, I made a promise to myself that when I find the truth, no matter how painful it may be to accept it, I'm going to accept the truth because the truth brings freedom. It brings a certain amount of liberation, right? So globe earth versus the flat earth, right? In Psalms uh, 10, verses 4, it says, um, Psalms, Psalms 104, verses 5, I'm sorry. Who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be moved forever? Who laid the foundations of the earth? If you think about a foundation, I understand building construction because as a, as a firefighter, you had to understand the dynamics of foundations because how a building is constructed could make a difference in the way how you attack a fire or if there's a, a danger of collapse you know understanding building construction properties helps you and so i've never seen a foundation for a ball right because a foundation is usually flat and a ball will roll off of a foundation right so when you're talking about a foundation balls usually have a core right and so, uh, you know, when you're talking about a foundation, the foundation is flat. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Once again, foundation. The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength. Wherewith he has girded himself, the world also established. That means it's, 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 um, it's been determined. Uh, it, it's it's been uh, it's it's place of 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 um of being a state of being. It's established that it cannot be moved, right? So once again, they're trying to tell us that the Earth is a ball spinning in space, and we're going to talk about the speed of some of this 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 stuff in a minute, right? Psalms ninety six ten says. 
uh, say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved, he shall judge the people righteously. And, you know, scripture after scripture is showing you that the earth is fixed and it shall not be moved, right? He shall judge the people righteously. So once again, who are you going to believe? You're going to believe God or you're going to believe the scientists? Proverbs 34, 30 and verse 4 said, Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? So if he's established all the ends of the earth, tell me where an end is at, uh, on, on a ball. How can you establish the end on a ball? Hmm? It's food for thought. In Hebrews 1 and verse 10, it says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth. Once again, the foundation. And the heavens are the works of thine hand. Isaiah 66 and verse 1 says, Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye built unto me, and where is the place of my rest? Now, I googled footstool just out of curiosity to see what all these all footstools look like, and if I can find me a round footstool. But what I found is you may have some that's round in, 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 in circumference, but the surfaces of every single footstool that I saw on Google was flat. Because if you've ever tried to rest either the heel or the, or, or the, or, or the, 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 the flat of your foot, on a ball, it is unstable. It's, you got to try to keep that balance uh, because it wants to roll. And so footstool is flat, right? So the earth is the footstool of the Most High. It is flat. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made, this is Genesis uh, 1 verse 7, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Okay, so let me pose another question then. If there is water under the firmament, and we can verify that easily, we've got oceans, we've got rivers, we've got lakes, we've got canals, so we've got, we see water under the firmament, right? The firmament is the sky, so to speak, right? And above this firmament, there's supposed to be water, right? And in fact, if you remember the, in the flood of Noah, the scripture said that the, 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 the gates of heaven was open. And so waters came up from the earth and down from above the firmament. So let me ask you this question then. Where is this water that's above the firmament? If the firmament, according to the scientists, it's got to be way, way out in the space past the, the moon and the stars and past, you know, Jupiter and Pluto and Mars and all these things, because supposedly they've been shooting rockets and satellites and all that stuff through, up there. So they must not have penetrated the, the, the water above there. So where's that water? I guess that water had to travel through space somewhere and then, you know, come down upon the earth because there's no firmament there. Right. But the scripture says that there's a firmament there. So where is this firmament, right? Ask the scientists to explain that, but they won't because they've been lying to you. In Genesis 7 and 11, it said, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Where are the windows of heaven? Job 37, 18, hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong as a molten looking glass? <laughs> okay, you can Google this for yourself, you know, if you have a curiosity. There, back in uh, this, the 1960s, 1962 to be exact, there was uh, an experiment called Operation Fishbowl. It was high altitude nuclear testing. And what they, the court, what they were explaining was that 
they were trying to test the limits of a nuclear explosion in space and to see whether it's strong enough to knock out any enemy satellite or missiles or whatever the explanation that they use to justify this experiments and they had all kind of cameras and you know whatever to record all the the results of the experiment and so they started shooting up nuclear tipped missiles straight up into the sky straight up into outer space quote us uh, quote unquote out of space the first one was about 1.7 kiloton and it was so it, so uh, uh, powerful was the explosion that it was reported that in Hawaii some some seven or nine hundred miles away that it uh, damaged a bunch of electronics you know a bunch of power poles uh, some of the wires wires were were uh, supposedly fused from the EMP, the electromagnetic pulse from that 1.7 kiloton nuclear explosion. Um, and for, for the next four years, Russia and the United States were both shooting up nuclear armed missiles up into the sky, and then they suddenly stopped. So it leads speculation. If you, if you want my opinion, as well as some others out there who think uh, that what happened was when missiles got powerful enough to be shot into outer space or into high altitudes, let's just put it that way, that they struck something up there. And when it struck something, they didn't know what it was. And so they were like, what in the world is that? And so they needed to figure out, well, how far does it go? What is the, the, the what is what is what is the, the the distance? What's the tolerance of it? How you know can we break through it? Because each missile that they shot up was more powerful. I think you know from one report I saw that the 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 last ones that they shot was some 400 kilotons or some you know if the first one was 1.7 the last ones were like up into threes and four hundreds. Okay, and when they finally discovered that they couldn't penetrate it, they just stopped and decided, well, we can't get through this thing. But we can use it um, as an opportunity to spin this story uh, and to create this agency called NASA, which is now, you know, in control of all the lies and the propaganda and all the fake moon landing and all the fake stuff that they, you know, that people may say, well, what, what about satellites? Satellites are up in space. Yeah, they're in lower space orbit. Right. But, you know, all that stuff about going into outer space and going to Mars and going to, you know, that, that's all fake stuff. All right. And you can believe these scientists if you want to. But I'm believing the word of God that things such as the moon and the stars are luminary bodies and that they're in the firmament. Right. But that, that's what the word of God says. <clears throat> but they want to try to tell you that the moon and the stars that they're you know, <clears throat> we have a sun centered universe and we're all orbiting around the sun. And we're going to discuss that in a minute. <clears throat> but just to go back to this flat earth versus, versus globe earth thing. Uh, do you know that when these architects are designing railroad and bridges that they don't consider the curvature of the earth when they're designing these, these railroads and bridges? Not only that, but snipers, they'll compensate for wind. They'll compensate for, for, for uh, and, and, and we say gravity, but there's no such thing as gravity. It's when the, 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 the motion of the bullet slows down enough it's going to fall to the earth because of it's, it's, it's heavier than air and it's going to fall because of that not because of gravity okay and so <clears throat> but they don't take account uh into uh the uh, with the curvature of the earth into account when they're shooting for distances i i the reason why i, I ended up in florida was because i was i i wanted to be a pilot i um was studying um from i was 16 years old there was a special program in my high school um, where we we trained to fly planes, and um, it, it was a, a program started by a captain in the Air Force, and he came out there. He taught us all the the elementary things about you know uh, aeronautical science, and we went through to, with flight simulators, and you know, and then we actually went up and flew Cessna 150s, 174s. So at 16 years old, I used to go out to Farmingdale, Long Island, and fly planes, and so I've seen you know um, I've been up in the air. In helicopters because <clears throat> I worked with our air rescue uh, the, the department um, in the fire department that I worked for and so I've been at you know anywhere from 
you know, a few thousand feet up in the air, up to 30,000 feet in commercial airlines. And the one thing that I have noticed is even before I, I, I really you know, started studying the scriptures is that you, you always saw the horizon was straight and the horizon always came up to meet your eyes, right? If the earth was round, don't you think at some altitude you're going to start seeing some curvature, right? Especially when you're up 30,000 feet in the air. Don't you think you should see some curvature of the earth? But the next time you're in a plane, look for yourself. Look out your window and see what the horizon looked like and tell me, do you see any curvature there? But they have you believing that the earth is a ball when your eyes is telling you, I don't see no curve. So where's that curvature, right? According to this table, that if you were able to see for 20 miles, there should be a 266 feet drop or curvature to the surface of the earth. Because according to them, the earth is approximately 24,000 miles at the equator, right? At the, at the centermost part of the earth. That's why they say it, it has to be spinning at 1,000 miles an hour to make a complete rotation within a 24-hour period, right? 1,000 miles an hour. I want you to think about how fast is 1,000 miles an hour. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know speed. If you've ever traveled in a car and stepped and stomped on the gas, you know what it feels like to accelerate. You know, and sometimes you're only going up to 60, 70, 90, and some of us may get brave and get up 100, 120, 100, whatever, right? You know what speed feels like. When you're sitting in that airplane and, 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 and they, they ram that throttle you know, uh, 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 forward and, and all of a sudden, you know, you feel that thrust as you're being pushed back into your seat. You know what acceleration feels like. People who are into drag racing, you know what acceleration feels like. If we are traveling at a thousand miles an hour, you don't think we feel it? But not only that, right? Think about this. An airplane, even if we were to say that there's this magical force called gravity <clears throat> and that this earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour, which if you understand centrifugal forces, that if you spin a ball, anything that's on that ball gets flung to the outside. That's why your dryers is a good example of that. As it's spinning or centrifuge, as it's spinning, the centrifugal force pushes everything out to the side. If you've ever been on those those rides at the um, at, at the um, the uh, youth fair or <clears throat> or in Disney or wherever uh, amusement parks, those rides that you get on in there, I remember there used to be one. I used to work at Coney Island, and there was this one ride that you'd lean up against the wall and it start to spin you. And it, and 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 the, the the part of the wall that you were leaning against it had wheels, and so at when you start spinning at a certain speed then that centrifugal force will push you so hard up against the wall that you now can, can literally crawl up the wall to where you go up to the top of this, this, this thing because you've been pressed so hard up against it that you're not able to push yourself up to the top of it and you're, you're, the centrifugal force keeps you there. And so you can feel that centrifugal force. If we're spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, don't you think you would feel some kind of centrifugal force uh, 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 trying to pull, push you out from the planet? But no, let's just say that gravity then is strong enough to keep you suspended on or stuck to the earth while it's spinning at a thousand miles an hour. What happens when a plane takes off from the surface of the earth? So now it's no longer in direct contact with the earth. <clears throat> Are you meaning to tell me that this magical force now will reach all the way up into the sky at 30,000 feet and snatch that plane and bring it along at a thousand miles an hour? Because if the plane ain't traveling at, a, at the same thousand miles an hour that the earth is traveling at, how do you land back on the earth? You can only get up to 500 and something miles an hour. How do you land back on the earth? Spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. Just, just, just common sense, right? I'll give you another, another question. If you're in a plane, you can feel when that plane pitches up, like when it's taking off, and you can feel when that plane, plane nose that noses down or pitches down when you're, when, when, you're decline, when you're descending, right? Look at these the other numbers. If you're 100 miles, uh, if you can see up uh, uh, 100 miles, there should be 6,000 feet of, ele of, 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 of curvature in the air. So let's just say, you know, we're, 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 we're only 20 miles up. We're only able to see 20. 
266 feet, you should see a curvature. You should see a curvature, right? But there's nowhere where when you get up to elevation that you're seeing any kind of curvature because they are lying to us. They are lying to us. So <clears throat> sun-centered universe in, in, in Joshua 10 verses 12. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Ajalon. Right? Do you know that most of the ancient civilizations believed that the earth was flat? Um, many of the, in the Ming dynasties and and, 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 and in the Hebrew tradition and many of the ancient civilizations, they all believe the earth was flat. Do you know that the UN, that their very uh, uh, logo is actually a flat earth model? Um, Joshua 10, 13 says, the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Right? I preached a message on this. And I just remember in the message that I spoke, I said because the sun does not move, because I was in that mindset that the scientist tells me that the sun is not what moves, but that the earth is what's moving and, and, and orbiting around the sun. So when I saw, in the message I preached, so when, when, when Joshua uh, said to the sun, stand thou still, that it wasn't the sun that stood still, but it was the earth that came to a screeching halt. And, and because that was the only explanation that I had at the time, because if the earth is what's moving around the sun, if we're spinning at a thousand miles per hour, then in order to stay at the same relationship for the, for the sun, to stay at the same relationship with the earth for a full day, that means that the earth would have to have stopped spinning, right? So that's what I preached in that message until I came to realize that this was all a lie, right? And I lied to the people when I said that. In ignorance, because I believe these scientists that the earth is a ball that's spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Anyway, um, so Psalms 19 verse 4 says, Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world, once again, end of the world, in them that have set a tabernacle for the sun. A tabernacle is 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 is, is like a, a, a a temple of housing or 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 or, or, or place of abode, right? A tabernacle, some kind of a a, 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 a shelter, um, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. So you know, let's see, a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. So that means the sun comes out of a chamber. Hmm. Huh, okay. Psalms 19.6 says, his going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. Well, there's a circuit for the sun, huh? So how, if the sun is moving, then uh, how does that work with the earth that's spinning at a thousand miles an hour? It's ridiculous. We're being lied to. Isaiah 38 and 7, and this sign shall be a sign unto thee for the Lord, from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees which has which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees by which degree it was gone down. So to break that down is the sundial works on as it gets you know to a certain position in the sky, it will cast a shadow at different degrees based upon its height in the skies and its relation to the sundial. So what the scripture is saying here, that the Most High caused the sundial as a sign to go back 10 degrees, which means the sun returned back 10 degrees from the normal circuit of the, of the sun. So for them to tell you that we are living in a sun-centered universe where the sun is still and everything orbits around the sun is patently false. But, here's, but not only are they telling us that the Earth is spinning at 1,000 miles an hour, but that all these planets are, are, are spinning around the sun, are orbiting the sun. And here are the speeds of some of these planets, according to what they're saying, orbiting the sun. That Mercury is supposedly orbiting the sun at 107 
1,000 miles per hour. That Venus is orbiting at 78,350. Earth is at 66,630. Mars at 54,000. Jupiter, 29,000. Saturn, 21,000. Uranus, 15,000. Neptune, 12,000. So, uh, folks, they throw these numbers out there. And they know there's no way for you to prove that. So you got to take them at their at, at their word. And not only are they telling us that we're orbiting all of these planets, uh, the sun is, we're orbiting, all these planets are orbiting the sun at all those crazy speeds, but that now everybody is going through the whole galaxy at some 400 and something thousand miles an hour. And it's just some crazy numbers, but it's all a lie. Because it's either we believe what God is telling us or we're going to believe what the scientists are telling us. And if we are to believe God, then all the stuff that they're telling us is a lie. Okay? Who is like unto the beast? Revelations 13 and 4 says, And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and, the, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth work great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from, from heaven <clears throat> on the earth in the sight of men. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in their sight, in the sight of the beast, saying unto them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. The reason why I have this here is because we're saying in the beginning we used to say who is like unto our God, who is like unto him. But now there's going to come a time when people are going to say, who is like unto the beast? And, you know, this is the reason why so many of us are going to be deceived. Because we chose to believe a lie than believe the truth. See, some of the best cons are not the ones who come out with this, you know, with it blatantly. But they subtly begins to change things, begin to get you to accept more and more, get you to accept a little bit uh, more and more, get you to accept a little bit more, till they've watered everything down so much that now you don't even know what's right from wrong anymore. And when you when you go to call things wrong, then people look at you like, what's wrong with him? You know, well, yeah, don't you know that's old school? That you don't you know that's the, no, don't nobody do that no more. Don't nobody talk like that no more. Don't nobody preach like that no more. You know. Uh, uh, sometimes we got to go back to the old ways, right? Once again, you know, there are times we need to tear down, pull up, destroy some things before we can build and we can plant, right? Jeremiah 1.10 says, See, I, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. See, before you can build and plant, you got to sometimes root out some stuff pull down some stuff and destroy some stuff and throw it down. Because when you, what we're trying to do out here is to debunk some of the lies that we've been told, some of the lies about history, some of the lies about uh, uh, geography, some of the lies about science, the lies about creation. We need to pull those things down, root them up, tear them down, destroy them because our people are perishing for a lack of knowledge, right? I'm not going to claim to be an expert in everything. You know, I'm learning just like a lot of you out there are learning. And there's a bunch of you guys that are good teachers out there. I've said this before in, in, in some of my other teachings of, is that some of you guys are, I, I'm really impressed by the hard work that some of you have done to uh, 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 find articles and find uh, quotes from books and quotes from, 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 from different historians. It takes time and effort to do that kind of stuff. And that's why, you know, I, I'm just really somewhat exasperated at times that our people 
no matter how you try to point them in the right direction and say, here, check out this person's video over here. Check out this person's teaching over here. That we're like, nah, nah, I'll stick to what my seminary uh, have, have taught me. I, I'll stick to what ORU uh, taught me. Or I'll stick, stick to what, you know, uh, uh, seven, I learned on 7-Eleven Club or whatever, you know, they call that. You know, I'd rather listen to what the Europeans are teaching me. When we have our own people who are our scholars, they're our teachers, but we have no respect for them because, oh, something that we're somewhat inferior in our knowledge. This is why we're, we're being hoodwinked because we are listening to people who don't have our best interest at heart and who wants to paint history in their own image and not tell you the truth about your history. In second, um, Corinthians 10, 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty uh, through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, going back to some of the things at the beginning of this presentation, some of the, 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 the alternative lifestyle that we're now saying, yeah, we need to be more understanding and we need to be more, more tolerant, right? You know, uh, these, to me, and I said this to my wife, I said every time we accept the concept of a round earth, we are dishonoring the most high. Because we're saying that, yeah, we know your account of creation, God, but... Our scientists is saying that this is how things are. So this this is what we believe in. It goes back, to, you know, it reminds me of when the children of Israel just came out of Egypt for the first captivity. And they were in the wilderness of and at the foot of Mount Sinai. And Moses had gone up there for 40 days. Right now, the miracles that the Most High did had to have been fresh in their minds because don't nobody bring you out of a land with the, 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 the power and the stretched out arms, all the plagues and all the, 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 the water turning to blood and, 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 and all the, the firstborn of the Egyptians dying, all the, the, the death angel, all that they witnessed came out of Egypt with great possession, right? Chased down by Pharaoh and his army. Right. Led by a cloud, a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Come to the crossing of the Red Sea. Pharaoh breathing down their necks. The Most High opened up the, 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 the sea and they walked through the water on dry ground. The water pile up like a mountain beside them. All this stuff they're observing. Eating manna, angels food, water from a rock. You you all know all the miracles. But Moses was a little delayed in coming down from the mountain. And what did they do? Build us a golden calf and said that these, this be our God that delivered us out of the hands of the Egyptian. Aren't we saying the same thing when we look at the model of creation that the Most High said that, that, that the earth is fixed, that it be not moved, that, you know, the four corners of the earth, the foundation of the earth, that there's a firmament in the sky, that there's waters above the firmament, right? Uh, all these things that, that paint one picture of creation, but the scientist says, no, nah, the earth ain't flat, it's round. And, 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 and it's spinning, not nah, a sun don't orbit around the earth, but the earth is spinning around the sun. You know, and, and so now what we're saying is, no, nah, these scientists, they be our gods now. These are the ones who are telling us how things are instead of the most high. And you think he's you think he's pleased with that? Because in the church, we're doing it. I'm not talking about the heathen. I'm talking about us in the church. Right. If I go and tell people like, you know, the earth is flat. Right. They look at me all cross. I like, OK, okay he on some other trip again. He on this Hebrew Israelite thing. Now he on this flat earth thing. He tripping. Right. But that's the attitude that you get. Because our people have replaced what the Most High is saying with what scientists are telling us, with what the politicians are telling us, with what teachers are telling us, but, but not what, what the Most High is telling us. Jeremiah 24 and verse 6 says, For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again 
to this land and I will bring I will build them and not pull them down and I will plant them and not pluck them up you know you can't build on a bad foundation and right now the foundation that we have is shaky right we need to go back and tear down some stuff people of the most high playtime is over we're hearing the warnings from from numerous uh, uh, people out there who are, are are interpreting end time prophecies and you know we have this mindset you know I was reading in the book of Jasher what happened when the people finally realized that what Noah had been warning them for about 120 years is now finally come upon them and when the waters of the flood began to rage upon them, they went beating down the door of the ark, talking about, Noah, let us in. You know, don't let us die out here. And Noah said, look here. I warned y'all for 120 years that it was going to rain. But what did y'all do? Y'all looked at me all funny. Y'all made fun of me. Y'all mocked me. Y'all laughed at me. Look at this crazy old fool building this big old boat in the middle of nowhere, talking about it's going to rain. We ain't never seen no rain. What's rain? Because the dew used to come up and water the water, water, water the plants from the ground. They never seen rain. So when that when that rain started coming, that's when they let us in. It's like, nah, it's too late now. And the same thing, the scripture says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the when when, when the Son of Man comes. Right? We're building on shaky foundation, and we need to go back and tear down some stuff. We need to we we need to remember the old landmarks. You know. Um, our young people are lost, right? And we have to uh, begin to rebuild uh, some of the old, the, the, the old things that were torn down, right? We can't. It can't be anything goes, right? We got to start you know, taking people to task. When these entertainers get up there and talk about, I thank my, my God and Savior Jesus Christ, but yet they, they, they on, on the next uh, uh, in the next breath they're wearing some little skimpy clad outfit in some video or or to some some award show and and, and you know it's just a, a fountain cannot bring forth bitter and sweet at the same time. We gotta call these people out. And stop letting them think that their lifestyle is okay. That just because they call on the name of 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 of, of, of Yeshua or, or or call on on the name of God, the devils believe and tremble. So that don't mean nothing. We don't give them a pass like that. I saw Tyler Perry up there laying hand on TD Jake and you know TD falling on the spirit. You know, I, look look here. I, I I don't know what kind of God y'all think y'all playing with out there, but he's not. He, he, you know, the, the, the scripture says God is not mocked. You know, whatever man sow, he gonna reap. And you can't be living your life any old way and think that, oh, I'm okay, and then then I'm just gonna waltz on into the kingdom and and I'm gonna enjoy the the, the, the riches of this world and enjoy the riches of the kingdom and live my life any old way in the world and then just walk forth. No, no, I don't know what kind of God you think we're serving here. But 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 I don't hardly recognize the God that y'all think y'all serving out there. Even in the Christian church, I don't hardly recognize that God. Because some of the some of the things that we're worshiping and, and some of the, the practices is that Hellenized paganistic. Yeah, we put a, we, we 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 try to dress it up, but you know, like the saying goes, you know, you can dress up a pig, uh, but it's still a pig, right? And, and 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 as soon as it gets the first opportunity, it's gonna go back to its nature of being a pig. So, you know what? Um, you know, we can play with God if we want to, but you know, we're living in some dangerous times. Jeremiah thirty one twenty eight, and it shall come to pass. That like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. Abraham Maslow is a, is a um, psychologist who came up with this hierarchy of needs. And, you know, I just wanted to go through this quickly. I, I, I probably went much longer than I wanted to with this lesson. Uh, Matthew 6 25 says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink or nor for your body, what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Luke 12 and 27 says, consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Luke 12, 28 says, if then be, if then God so close the graph, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe ye or clothe you, O ye of little faith? 
Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see, in Maslow's theory of, of, of needs, you start off with your basic needs, your physiological need, and then you progressively get, get up to the higher levels of the pyramid, which the final level is self-actualization, self-realization. That's where you're now at that spiritual level, that, that higher level, which the scriptures teach us the exact opposite. It says first, get to that higher level. Get to that relationship level. Get to that level where you're connecting with your creator. Get to that level where you have a, a, a close-knit relationship with the Most High. Get to that level where, where, where your, 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 your desire is to abide in his presence. Get to that level where his love so overwhelms you that, that, that that's all you can think about when you get up in the morning, when you go to bed at night. When you get to that level where you're seeking him with all of your heart, with all of your might, with all of your soul, then all these other things are going to uh, just fall into place, just fall into place. But see, when we, when we listen to people like Maslow and start worrying about our physiological need, that's why we're out there working two or three jobs, killing ourselves. Don't have any time to, to even pray. Don't have any time to worship because we come home, we're so tired. We, we got to go in there. We got to take care. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, you're just going to lay down and just, you know, it's, 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 so as, as the saying goes, so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. You know, but what I'm saying is that you are, if, if you seek first his kingdom, and if he's your priority, then all the other things that the heathens are worried about, they're gonna, he's going to take care of those things because he knows you have need of those things, right? So let's stop, let them stop telling us how we should worship and how we should go after our needs. Luke 12, 31 says, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Hell has enlarged <clears throat> its borders. You know, um, hell was never meant for people. Hell was created for Satan and the fallen angels. But because of our disobedience and because of sin, the scripture talks about that <clears throat> there's going to come a time when hell is going to expand itself so wide because it's capacity is going to be increased to accommodate all the people that's going to end up there who should be there. Um, Isaiah 5 and 13 says, therefore my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Right? Our honorable men, who are our honorable men? Our pastors, our elders, our bishops, right? And who are the multitude? The people. If our honorable men, those who are in authority, those who are over us, are famished, are starving, right? If they're starving, what are we eating? Remember Jesus said to, uh, to, 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 to Peter, Simon Bar, Jonas, lovest thou me more than these feed my sheep, feed my, my sheep, feed my flock, right? So if they're not, if they're famished, then what are we eating? That's why we're dried up with thirst. Because not only are we not, 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 not getting any good food, but is this, where's the spirit? You know, I, I, was, I, was, I was saying to my wife the other day, I mean, I'm like, I don't see the, the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit moving in amongst the church the way that, it, that, that, that he should be moving. Why? Because we are dying of hunger and thirst for the word. Because the truth of the scripture is not being preached to the people. Isaiah 5, 14 says, Therefore shall hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Romans 9, 27 says, Isaiah also, cry, also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant, a remainder, a small portion, shall be saved. There's one scripture that says, one from a city, two from a family. That's a crying shame. That's a crying shame. Because it is not the will of the Most High that any should perish, but that all should come to uh, eternal life. But there again, because 
when we 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 won't we didn't want to retain God. The scripture says when we knew God, we we retained him not within our mind or something like that. And therefore he's given us over to a reprobate mind, right? We 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 we've, we've, we've lost that first love. We've lost there's there's just something that 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 when you yeah you know, I, I I go up in the balcony of my church and I look down over the people sometime and I just shake my head I see us going through the motions and I just wonder you know how much could the Most High be doing for us and through us if we would just 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 let Him uh, uh, speak to us and 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 not be so quick to reject you know, new ideas when, 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 when people are coming to us because the Most High says he's going to cause these young men to see vision and, 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 and there's going to be dreams and prophesies, prophecy going on. So how are we going to receive these dreams? How are we going to receive the prophecy? Our people are stiff-necked. If you, if, you, if you don't understand that by now, if, especially if you are a, a, a Hebrew and, you, and, and, and you're awakened Hebrew, you found out that whenever you try to talk to your people who are not awakened, man, it's 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 it's, it's such a, a, a challenge because they don't want to hear. You know, I've, I've seen where families are no longer talking to one another because they don't want to hear. So I I just you know I, I leave people into the hands of the Most High because I know this is a spiritual thing. And I know that, you know, in the fullness of time, he's going to reveal it uh, to whoever, whoever he's going to reveal it to. And, you know, um, but it's sad that only a remnant of people are going to be saved. Um, Isaiah 10, 20 says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and as such as are escaped of the house of Judah shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel in truth. So right now, you know, we're resting upon the, the, the hands of those who, 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 who smote us, right? The land of those who held us captive. The land, we're, we're, we're leaning on, 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 on the land of our captivity. That's why I say some of us is, are, are comfortable here, right? But there's going to come a time when we're going we're, we're gonna to no longer stay or lean upon him that smote us. But we're going to lean upon the Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 10, 21 says, The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. Many will die. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servant, and his indignation towards his enemy. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Listen, when the Most High comes, when Yeshua comes, he ain't coming to play. He's coming with fury, with rebuke and with flames of fire. So y'all can get in the way if you want to. That's why the scripture says, come out of Babylon so that you be not partakers of her plagues, because when he starts to pour it down, though I, I fear that many of our people are going to be caught up because we're not discerning the times. Isaiah 66, 16 says, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Jeremiah 51, 11 says, Make bright thy arrows, gather the shields, the Lord hath raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, for his device is against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. Curse of the Edomites. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Edomia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, it is made fat with, with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams, for the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea. You know, there's uh, one scripture that said, you know, you shouldn't have stood there and watched as your brother was 
you know, taken into captivity and you shouldn't have came in and spoiled his goods and you shouldn't have blocked the path when they were trying to escape. He said, you shouldn't have. That's talking about the, uh, the Edomites, right? And so that is, is going to come back on them. You know, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. That same spirit of Esau that said, hey, I'm going to kill my brother. And he tried to kill us. He's tried to kill us. But all the innocent blood that he shed is going to come back on him. You know, and so uh, the Most High is coming with vengeance. He will correct injustices. In um, James 5 and verse 4, it says, You refuse to pay the people who worked in your fields, and now their unpaid wages are shouting out against you. The Lord All-Powerful has surely heard the cries of the workers who have harvested your crops. See, it's not just the blood that's crying out, but it's also the wages of people. See, I remember hearing some of the stories of Trump and how he would handle some of his contractors that when they completed the work, he'd say, nope, I'm not happy with the job. I'm not paying you what I, what I agreed to pay you. And then they had to turn around and try to sue him and then sometimes end up having to settle for far less than what uh, they, they had contracted for. And he brags about this kind of stuff. Well, you know what? Those unpaid wages are crying out against him too. They think they're getting away with stuff like that. His family walking around, Jared Kushner, you know, with all the Saudi money that he's getting to help to bail out his 666 building over there, wherever it is up, up there in New York or wherever. Um, the Trump and all the Russian money that's helped him to get into the presidency and all the, 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 the stuff that they're doing. Yeah, I, 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 listen, these, these evangelicals can stand behind them if they want to. When the Most High decides to pour out his wrath, some of them are going to be caught up in his judgment too because they're calling evil good, okay? Um, while here on earth, you have thought only of filling your own stomachs and having a good time. But now you are like fat cattle on their way to be butchered. You have condemned and murdered innocent people who could not even fight back, who couldn't even fight back. And, you know, that reminds me so much of him, right? And so much of the rich, rich people in this world that the poor, they are just doing everything they can. You know, I just recently heard that they're turning, uh, that, that they're uh, reversing the uh, the whole uh, payday loan uh, thing that when when Obama got into office and through the help of Elizabeth Warren and that watchdog agency that they started that they cracked down on these payday uh, lenders that was that was victimizing the poor uh, because they, and most of it in our in our communities that's why you see all these pawn shops and payday loan shops and all these stuff you know in our communities to prey on us. Where they charge all these high interest rates and, you know, when you're desperate and you need money, you know, you, you, you need that in your hand right now. And so they, okay, we'll advance your check, but you're going to pay us back 25% or whatever the numbers that they're charging. So now they roll back the regulations to allow these people to come back and start doing the same thing again. They roll back the banking regulations so, so people can start, you know, playing with these toxic assets like they did before that, that, that caused the crash of the economy, right? They're just preying on poor people. But yet y'all are, are piling up riches unto yourselves and piling up money unto yourselves and having a good time. But you know, your, your time is coming. Amos 9 and 11 says, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Now I know people are going to read this and you know say, oh, you know, that's just black racism, you know. Uh, look, this is what the scripture says, and it says that the true Hebrews are going to be restored, and that they're going to possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathens. And the end of all the heathens which are called by my name. Who are the heathens that are called by his name? All right. Those who's come along in Christianity, those who are grafted in, those are the heathens that are called by his name. Right. And so there, there's a hierarchy. 
I'm not saying, you know, and, 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 and to me, what is considered, and, and there's another scripture that says that we're going to possess them for handmaids and for servants and whatever. You know, it ain't going to be this kind of slavery, this brutality that, that we, we endured. That's not, that, that's not, you know, what I see happening in the kingdom. Because when you have a spirit of love and compassion, you're not going to treat people like that. And so there's, 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 there's a hierarchy in the kingdom. And people are going to do whatever their roles are, happy just to be a part of the kingdom. You know, and those who are who, whose heart are so uh, 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 evil that the very thought of 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 uh, black folks being elevated amongst them in any fashion, you know, it, it, it causes some people to say, uh, uh, if that's their God and that's how things are going to be, I don't want no part of it. Well, 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 go on, get them. You know, um, because at the end of the day, you know, the the, the people who the Most High wants are those who are going to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Um, verse 13 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. So, you know, the seasons are just going to be running into each other. That by the time the plowman is done, you know, it's time to reap. And by the time you, you, you're done reaping, it's time to plant again. And, and, and we're, during that time, it's just going to be blessing. The mountains are going to drop with sweet wine. And the hills shall melt, the scripture says, right? And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. 15. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. Those people over there... You know, the, I'm not, to be honest with you, I've, 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 I've seen a couple of videos that, that are showing that, you know, where the Jerusalem is today may not be the, the, the site of the real Jerusalem. And, you know, I, I, I can tend to agree with that. And I tell you why, because the scripture said that while we are in the land of our captivity, that the land will enjoy its Sabbaths, Right. And so if the land is enjoying its Sabbaths, then that means that there's nothing being planted there. There's nothing, you know, but, you know, there again, there's scriptures about being uh, that Jerusalem is trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So I'm still, you know, uh, uh, looking to gain understanding of that. But, you know, there's enough to say that, you know, maybe it is, maybe it ain't. But regardless of where the true Jerusalem is, that is our land. That is the land that the Most High has promised us. And so I don't care who's in the land right now. They're going to get up on out of there if that is the, the, the true location of Jerusalem. And if not, then that land is going to begin to bloom and to bud because it's going to become a fruitful land again. Because the Most High said it's going to be that way. So... Israel, I know that we're living in some troubled times. It's disturbing to see how much we've let down the standard. It's distressing to see that everything has just crept in. And I know that many of you got out of the Christian church. And I, like I said, I'm not faulting anybody for leaving that, that, that Christian church. Because we all know, especially those of us, who have been studying paganism, the Roman Catholic Church, and all the Hellenism, uh, the things that they brought into into the into Christianity, and you know, Christianity today is a mashup of Hellenized Christianity with hints of paganism, and you know, there's a lot of things that's that's wrong with Christianity today. But as I said in um, the early part of this presentation, that you know, I'm I'm, I'm choosing until the, until the Most High tells me to get out. To stay and try to to, to, to to talk and to to work with the people and you know and, and try to deliver as many of our people out of some of these practices as we can. You know, sometimes you know we can't just run from the problem and expect for it to be handled. 
You know, sometimes we got to be there to be able to to work with the people and talk to the people and warn the people and 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 hope that the Most High would deliver them. You know, and 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 will reveal the truth to them in the fullness of time. So, having said all of that, you know, I love you all, and you know, um, let's let's keep on sounding that trumpet out there because you know the the our deliverance is at hand. All right, God bless. One love.